Welcome to Hillcrest Wine Notes. Um, today's tasting is going to be a very first or premiere, the French might say, release of a wine that was many years in the making. And uh, many of you recall having uh, tasted uh, the Geordie wine, which was a wine we produced in 2013, which a dear friend of ours from Prairie Rot, Spain, that we make uh, Lo Americano and Pobaleda with in uh, the village of Pobaleda, Geordie. Um, put together, it was a blend of wines that we had in barrel put together by a Spanish palate, so an interpretation of flavors of Umpqua, but with a very different kind of directive. Um, over the years, here in Umpqua Valley, um, I have become, I guess, uh, uh, aware of how unique uh, Merlot is. And uh, when I worked at Madavi, it was very famous for kind of uh, wondering why we did Merlot. I understood why we blended it. But Merlot is a very interesting grape. It's a grape that is very easy to make into to drinkable wine, soft, easy, but very difficult to make into distinctive wine. And like I like to say, good wines taste like a grape, and great wines taste like a place. Coming here to Umpqua Valley, uh, I was amazed at the, the distinctiveness, the personality, uh, the depth and the richness that we see from Merlot. And uh, as important as it is to come with new ideas, it's also important to listen to nature and what nature wants to deliver. And because of that, we produce Right Bank, which is our signature Bordeaux variety right now, Merlot based, a little bit of Cabernet Franc. Same kind of thing happened to both Susan and I um, as we began to make wine in Priorat, Spain, is that we knew we wanted to do Carignan and Grenache or Garnacha, which are very classic varieties that uh, have been done there for well over a millennia. And uh, in tasting different wines around and tasting wines with Jordi, we were always amazed at the distinctiveness, once again, of Merlot. Uh, Merlot was very powerful, very rich, um, a wine that spoke to the place. And you know, I like to say good wines taste like a grape and great wines taste like a place. And it had that, that somewhereness. And so in 2016, uh, we took fruit with Jordi and began uh, crafting a wine that is 90% Syrah, or excuse me, 90% Merlot with 10% Syrah. And uh, this is the very first release, or we say premier release, of our Lichorelia, which is how you pronounce it in Catalonian. Um, it's a wine that, that comes from very low yielding vineyards, and where it actually gets the name Lichorelia is from the slate. And there are many different colors of slate throughout Europe and many of the famous vineyards. Uh, the fooder that we produce comes from blue slate. Uh, some of the other wines we produce might come from red slate or gray slate, but very unique to Priorot is black slate. And uh, Lichrelia refers to licorice and the color of licorice or the black slate. So this is the very first wine we've produced from um, uh, vineyards in that area. And what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and taste this wine. That One of the things I want to talk about is when you look at wine in, in glasses, stemware, there are recommended glasses for Pinot and Cabernet and that. Those are good guidelines, but sometimes you'll find that just the opposite of what's recommended is best. And oftentimes the Bordeaux varieties, which Merlot was one, one with Cabernet Franc and Cabernet Sauvignon and Malbec, we look at a chimney, which is more classic like this. And I would normally defer it originally when I first, when wines first landed, I grabbed one of these glasses, tasted it out of it, and it was very, very beautiful. But uh, a couple of days later, as we opened up a bottle for uh, dinner and that, I poured in a kind of a range of glasses and I was amazed at the difference. So if you do have the Burgundian stemware, what we commonly refer to as the Pinot glass, this glass is what I would recommend it. Lowest yields in the world or the bottom third of the Pyrenees, and you know that's the mountain range, of course, that separates Spain and France and what is known as Catalan today or Old Catalonia. Oftentimes the great vineyards are three quarters of a ton an acre a year in and year out. And that would be compared to, you know, in Umpqua Valley, maybe three, four tons an acre, or other places, eight, 10 tons an acre. As a general rule, the lower the yields, the more concentration. And so where you see really almost no dirt, just rock, very dry conditions and windswept hills, you get these small plants that produce very, very concentrated, almost bonsai the plant, bonsai the fruit, you get this intense power and intense character. So this is the Lichirelia, uh 2016. And I'll go ahead and uh, have a fruit serving, as we'd say. Um, very dark color again, I think you can see. Uh, that shows typically the intensity with most grapes. Um, The first thing that hits me is very intense, kind of deep, dark fruit. 
there's what uh, the French call pain gris. Pain gris is actually grilled fruits. And oftentimes on the Western exposure of the Pyrenees, you get that warm afternoon sun and that, that slate, especially dark colored slate, think about like the bottom of the swimming pool, absorbs that heat and then radiates that heat. And it gives you this kind of roasted sweet character and I get this beautiful intensity. I get a little bit of like a, a, a sage almost too. There's a little bit of like a beautiful sweet herbaceousness in, in the nose, but very kind of full throttle, you know, deep, deep, deep in, in the nose. Wine has architecture, and th this wine actually kind of, oftentimes it's interesting, Merlot will come across the palate, kind of open up and then close back down. This wine kind of enters and just begins to fan out. A very, very kind of sweet fruit round. Once again, very, very long. Um, I still get this, this almost kind of like a Santa Rosa plum, sweet perfumey black fruit. Um, and a little bit of tannin. Actually, the tannins are, are very fine in this. And it's a great difference between the Bordeaux glass and, and the Pinot glass I'm pouring it in. Super fine. I get um, on the very front end of my palate, almost like uh, when you peel an orange and you get a little bit of that white rind, that kind of a very kind of soft, dry character. That is, is tannin. You find tannin in many types of plants in that. But this is very polished, very elegant. Something we'd associate more like with Pinot Noir. But um, beautiful, dark, very rich. Um, with that, I'd like to say, you know, once again, serve it in a Pinot glass if you have a Pinot glass around. Um, the other thing is, and we're gonna do a little release on this uh, a little bit later, uh, uh, at the beginning of June, is that we're gonna be offering all of our international wines as well as our Oregon wines at 25% off a straight case or a mixed case. And this wine will qualify for that. It's the very first time we've done that. And we're doing that as a way to kind of hopefully get people to try things that maybe they're not familiar with. We have so many beautiful, beautiful, super distinctive wines. And, you know, as wine consumption has gone up a little bit here in, in, in recent past, it's a beautiful opportunity to go out there and taste some things and uh, see what the world has to offer. So anyway, to the genie in the bottle and be safe.